Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, this day we lift up your name above every other name. As we command that day, we bring before you those who are on the front line on the battle that is ongoing globally, COVID-19 battle. We dedicate this morning, speaking into the atmosphere that we shall release faith on the front line, upon the front line warriors. In every battle, there are those that find themselves on the front line, and the front line is where the battle is usually most fierce. That is where the battle is tough. That is where the risk is highest. And I stand here this morning with burden from the phone calls and those I have spoken to and the things the Lord has placed on my heart. And these are people who their loved ones or they themselves are on the front line. One of us called in some days ago, he said, I've been listed to be among those. I, I believe he's actually working in the lab. And you know, those that are in the lab have to keep testing and testing and testing. People are not thinking about them. He said, I'm coming for prayers before I go and report for that duty. You know, that things people experience because we are not in it. Ask the nurses who have to do intubation on them. Ask the nurses whether there's enough covering that can protect you. If you're on front line nursing these patients, you have a daughter who also, her sister called me from Abuja and said, she's one of the doctors who have been enlisted. You know, let me tell you, maybe you don't have anyone on the front line. But those that their own are on the front line, they're asking for covering, they're asking for prayers because they know what it means globally and so this morning I'm asking what does it take to survive on the front line and the Holy Ghost laid on my heart faith on the front line there's also grace on the front line and there's also mercy on the front line and all this work together and so we'll be praying for faith on the front line and understand how this faith works. If you're on the front line and you've lost faith, then you are going to, I mean, you, you, without faith, without faith, without faith. It's easy to become a casualty because of the things they see daily where they are. It's war, it's way war. And you want me to join today as we command our money to pray for them that God will strengthen the faith of everyone that is on the front line in the name of Jesus. Will I say, let me define front line, let me use the military front line which we are used to. The military front line or part of an army that is closest to the enemy is what you call the front line. The front line troops, that's what they are called. They're called the frontline troops. But for the health workers, you have more of the health care workers, such as doctors and nurses. They are the ones that are recognized, but they're not the only ones. Even the drivers that have to carry these patients, those who drive the ambulance, they're all on the front line. Even the security men, anyone who is in contact, because all it takes is that a patient will use a handle or a handrail, and you go there and the infection is spread. And so we want to pray for those that need miracle on the front line. And it's faith that is the key for that miracle. It's tied to the word of God. A thousand shall fall by the right, 10,000 by the left. And no evil shall come near your dwelling place. And I prophesy this morning in the name of Jesus. Everyone that have your loved one walking on the front line in this season, receive the word by faith. A thousand may fall by your right, ten thousand by your left. Every time your loved one is leaving the home, receive the word that no evil shall come near your dwelling place. And that's why we are trusting God today 
that all that are in front line that they receive divine visitation, encouragement, grace, and strength in whatever area and field that they're expecting it from the Holy Ghost. Colossians chapter 4 from verse 2 to 3. Let us keep praying. Let's devote ourselves to prayer. Keeping our heart in an attitude of thanksgiving. Praying at all times over this our nation, Nigeria. Let's stop speaking negative things now. Paul said, continue earnestly in prayer. Being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. Continue. Be vigilant in it. Know what you say. Start saying the right things. You are going to see things turn around. Even out of this pandemic situation. We are coming out of this situation. Victorious in Jesus name. Not to go back to live our wayward life. A life of corruption and waste. But we are coming out in glory. I say we are coming out in glory in Jesus name. So he wrote a second letter to the Thessalonians. Paul said finally brethren pray for us. That the word of the Lord may spread rapidly and be glorified. This is what we should be saying in this country. That the word of God. Be done what? Spread. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 1. The second letter he wrote to the church of Thessalonians. What was his prayer? Men on front line are men who suffer. They know what they suffer. They don't want to start suffering. For somebody to come and spoil the gospel. I mean when you labor for something. You don't want that thing to be destroyed. When you are really laboring. You can't watch something go bad. He said finally brethren pray for us. That the word of the Lord may run swiftly. And be glorified just as it is with you. And I believe God. That the word of God. The word of God we go speedily all over Nigeria. Healing we go speedily over Nigeria. On the front line, faith we go speedily as we command our morning. We declare this morning in Jesus' name that faithful Christians, that for the sake of the gospel, that they will arise on the altar. They will stand with these men that are on the front line and they will pray. And as we join with them to pray and as we devote to Christ, we declare in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ today that there's going to be a shift and in this shift we decree and declare in Jesus name from the book of Colossians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4 that the joy of the Lord will go out Colossians 4 from chapter from verse 12 we declare in the name of our Lord Jesus that as we labor together that God will reconcile our mind in the place of prayer in the name of Jesus we stand in the book of James chapter 5 from verse 16 we pray that God will release the spirit of effective prayer the Bible said that effective prayer that it has felt much we pray that the fervent prayer of the righteous man goes out from the altars and that these righteous prayers that are fervent that it will avail it will avail it will avail it will avail it will release faith on the front line for all those that are on the front line this day in Jesus name we stay on Proverbs 15 8 and we pray that the sacrifice of the wicked knowing that it's an abomination but that God delights in the prayer of the righteous therefore we pray from this altar in Jesus name that every word of the wicked spoken over this nation shall not take root in Jesus name but rather we pray for safety we pray for safety today and we believe it we call for safety Acts chapter 14 verse 2 we declare today safety for all those that are on the front line in the mighty name of Jesus we declare and declare that the Lord God Almighty preserves them and their own and their family and their loved ones in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ Amen and therefore we say in this manner Therefore, our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. All those that are on the front line, provide for them. Forgive them as they also will this day. Forgive those who trespass against them. Lead them all not into temptation, 
Some of them are careless, Lord. Teach them how to use their gears properly. Deliver them from every evil that is set against them. The kingdom belongs to you. The power and the glory, they all belong to you, Lord, now and forevermore. And since we say peace, we're going to call for the peace of our Lord Jesus. The Bible spoke about this peace. Matthew 15, 33. There is peace that surpasses the understanding of men. That is the peace that we pray for them today. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7. We are commanding peace upon them this morning. As they wake up and some of them, I tell you, those who didn't get to this prayer, those who don't reach it, um, I want to please ask you once more, can you please help us share this prayer and also subscribe so you can get our prayers as we keep releasing them this season, that you become an instrument to share this news. There are some waking up this morning, they don't have access to this truth. Share it, somebody will be blessed. Because as it goes out, it goes out with peace. And the Bible said, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guide your heart and mind to Christ Jesus. Peace of God. It surpasses the understanding of doctors. It surpasses the understanding of medicine. It surpasses the understanding of the scientists. I pray this morning that it will guide everybody's mind. And this is going to happen through Christ Jesus. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4. There's, an, there's no exception to this prayer. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 14. No, no exception. But God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he has loved us. A God who is what? Rich in mercy. Whether you are a Jew, whether you are a Gentile, it does not matter. We declare today that Christ reconciles every man with an inner assurance that past sin and forgiving and present events are being overruled for good in future. That nothing will separate you from the love of God except if you refuse Jesus as your personal Lord and your Savior. May I lead you to pray this prayer this morning, the sinner's prayer, so that you ensure that this one thing does not separate you. Join me this morning and pray. Invite Jesus. If you're a doctor, if you're a nurse, and you heard this, you're on the front line of any kind of manner of battle. Front line on the battle of COVID-19 is the same in every kind of front line. Whether you're a soldier, whether you're an airline personnel, wherever you are, whether you are working in World Health Organization, you need to pray this prayer now. Pray that God becomes your Lord and your Father. Pray with me. Say, Jesus, I invite you to be my Lord and my Savior. Come into my heart and save me. In Jesus